So that's what's going on here. We'll monitor the situation as long as it stays safe. This is all happening amid reports that fighting has been renewed in Donetsk, where we all just came from, that Ukraine is trying to retake that city. Uh, and we will tell you what we hear about that as it becomes reportable. Uh, right now, though, uh, I believe I want to bring in uh, William Taylor. He is the former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine. Do we have Mr. Taylor? We do. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, thank you very much. Uh, you've been hearing what I'm saying here. Uh, help us understand this, this inconsistency where um, you have on one side there's access and on the other side um, there is complete lockdown by very, very uh, aggressive military. Uh, you know the special police, the Birkut. Help us understand the dynamic that's going on here in terms of power and access. Well, what we see here is the Russian-supported separatists, and as you say, the Berkut, which used to be in the Ukrainian government that was uh, expelled from that, is now just part of the separatist government, self-declared government. They are responsible, the Russian-supported separatists are responsible for the problem. They have been, as you know, they have been part of the problem for the last several months. It's taken this tragedy this tragedy of the of the shoot down of this civilian airliner to bring the world's attention to what's been going on with the russian supported terrorists and separatists uh, in in southeastern ukraine right. so it is that's that's the real problem that's going on for some time right, now we understand it all right but we understand it you've understood it for a long time. The U.S. government has understood it for a long time. So the question becomes, how did we allow this to happen? We, the international community, U.S. led with Western authorities. How did we allow the people who are in the circle of suspicion for bringing down the plane to be in charge of the crash site and allow the bodies to languish for days, complete indignity? How is that allowed if this local self-appointed militia is so unimpressive in so many ways? Why are we standing in the current situation that we're in? We're standing in the current situation because we haven't acted forcefully against the Russian government, frankly. Um, the Russians have been supporting these separatists for months. Uh, they have been supplying weapons for months. Now we know, now we can see the weapons that they've been providing, and we see the training that they've been providing, and we see the leadership that they're providing, we see the Russian citizens, indeed the Russian officials out of the military intelligence, the Russian military intelligence, who are leading um, in this. So we've seen this for some time. We've taken some mild sanctions, some mild actions um, in form of, of pinpoint sanctions that have only been recently expanded. It's now up to us to lead the Europeans in broader sanctions as well as a criminal investigation of, the, of those responsible for this, for this tragedy. You're a former ambassador. You have a little bit more leeway to be candid here, I would imagine. So uh, let me ask you something and see if we can just get a straight answer on it. This sounds like cheap talk. I'm not coming from you, sir, with all due respect. But the idea that we've put any pressure on Russia at all seems almost laughable. Uh, they literally smile here, this self-appointed local prime minister, or whatever you want to call him, when told that the U.S. and Western authorities aren't happy with what's going on here, he smiles, he shakes his head like, so what? How can you look at what's going on with Russia right now for all your pictures and your understanding of what they're doing and that they're training these people and your sanctions? It has done nothing. Isn't that the truth? That's the truth, but that also the truth is that it doesn't matter what those separatists say. Those are thugs. They are self-appointed thugs, mainly criminals, thugs, drunkards, as we've seen. They are irrelevant. What's relevant is the support coming across the border from Russia into southeastern Ukraine. That what, that's what has to stop. Mr. Putin can stop that in a heartbeat. He can close off that border. That's what he needs to do. He has a choice. He can either double down supporting these, these thugs, these cr criminals, these separatists, or he can disavow them and cut off the supply and seal that border. It's really up to Mr. Putin. It's not up to the thugs that, that are, you're talking to there in, in southeastern Ukraine. To this point, it's pretty clear he's chosen to be evasive. He's chosen plausible deniability in his involvement in this. The evidence is overwhelming. Uh, Secretary Kerry was very clear. 
um, the international community has seen um, all of the evidence. It's mounting daily. Um, he can no longer avoid, Mr. Putin can no longer avoid this. He has to make a decision, double down or disavow. So with those two options, double down or disavow, where is the U.S. role in this? You say that the United States, the international community, has not reacted forcefully enough with Russia's involvement here. What should be done in the most immediate sense? The first step today, what more can be done if sanctions to this point haven't, cho haven't forced him to choose the correct path, if you will? The sanctions have not been broad enough or deep enough or harsh enough. So the sanctions that Mr. Obama that President Obama announced last Wednesday are a beginning. They need to go further. The Europeans need to go further. We need to push them to go further. In the UN, the, 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 the Russians will be further isolated today. That's clear. The, the, uh, the French are about to sell the Russians two Mistral uh, weapon systems, uh, naval weapon systems, uh, helicopter hel uh, aircraft carriers, essentially. We should buy those. Uh, we should not let them go to the Russians. We should buy them from the from the French. And there are ways that uh, that that we could do this. Buy them from the French. Why isn't the answer to use your political leverage that supposedly the U.S. should have to tell the French, don't sell the Russians weapon systems when they're obviously using them to equip people who are doing things that are supposedly antithetical to humanity. I mean, if you look at Syria and you look at where I am right now, and if Russia's in control, they're basically allowing uh, the dead who have nothing to do with this conflict to just swelter in the sun. Their bodies have been here for days. And you're saying, well, we have to have tougher sanctions. It just seems, uh, Mr. Former Ambassador, that it's just a hollow rationale. It hasn't done enough. It hasn't been enough. There has to be a better answer. Do you believe anything better will be coming, or is it just going to be more of the same? I do think it better is going to come. I think that this is a game changer for the Europeans. The Europeans have been able to look away. And, and think of this as a small little conflict in, that doesn't really affect them. Well, now it affects them. The Europeans are going to take serious action. When I say buy them from, buy these uh, Mistrals from the French, um, they, it turns out, are about to pay a large uh, fine. Um, we should reduce that fine a little bit so that they can send those Mistrals to the United States instead of, instead of sending them to Russia. The, the, the French will be willing to do this. The Dutch are so angry. They are going to take steps. The British are calling for the same thing. We should lead that. We should make it clear that Mr. Putin is going to pay an enormous price if he doubles down on those, on those separatists. And and he needs to disavow them and close that border. Well, listen, uh, Mr. Taylor, William Taylor, former ambassador of the U.S. to Ukraine, I thank you for the this morning. I'll tell you, the international community, this may be a flashpoint for them, but I have to tell you, they're not here. Only the Dutch are here, and luckily, uh, we have the international monitors for violence who are here. He's going to join us right now and talk to us. Us, but thank you very much uh, for joining us. Guys, do you want to talk to Michael now or do you want to wait till after the break? Let me know.